you know, when you when you buy a, a shirt in the United States, you buy uh, a Hathaway shirt if it's made offshore. You buy a Christian Dior shirt. You know, do you ever dream? Do you ever imagine like where it comes from? Do you ever imagine who makes it? Over the past 10 years, free trade zones promoted and funded by U.S. tax dollars have invaded Central America. They make fantastic profits for the offshore corporations that inhabit them. Six mornings a week in Honduras, the Dominican Republic, El Salvador and Guatemala, almost half a million young people, mostly teenage girls, set out to work in the free trade zone factories, the maquilas. In the U.S., most of these youngsters would be heading to school. Here they work 12-hour shifts, deprived of an education, deprived of a future, producing goods for the U.S. market at 5 to 10 percent of U.S. wages. The company names are familiar. Sag Harbor, Arizona for J.C. Penney, Gitano by Fruit of the Loom sold at Walmart, Eddie Bauer, Oshkosh, and more, all assembled by children in these monstrous sweatshops of the New World Order. Yeah, if, you, if you take a look at these ads here, which are targeted at U.S. companies to convince them to go offshore, to access the low wages in El Salvador or other countries, you'll see the wage 57 cents an hour if you would go offshore. A year later, the wages are down to 33 cents an hour. You can hire Rosa Martinez. This is the corporate agenda. And a part of that corporate agenda is to pit young workers in the third world against workers in the United States. We're pitted to be pitted against each other in a race to the bottom. Who will accept the lowest wages? Who will accept the least benefits? Who will accept the most miserable working conditions? This is a plan. The companies want us to focus on Rosa Martinez as our enemy. She's not our enemy. For a 15-year-old girl who has not yet completely formed a personality, has not yet completely developed physically, who is just beginning to feel life, who is opening her eyes to so many new things important to any human being, love, friendship, living with other people, to fall into the maquila is to fall into a deep, dark well. She must cease to be a person. She must become a cog in the wheel which is only important to the degree that it makes the great machine of the maquila function. All the, all the free trade zones keep their own uh, goon squad, their own armed uh, security people. So of course, uh, it's almost impossible to get into these plants to do any research, to do an investigation. Uh, the system is, is hidden behind barbed wire, hidden behind these, these guards with their weapons. This renunciation of happiness, renunciation of all that produces development and satisfaction of the personality, makes her feel as if the process of human advancement is closed off. She sees herself plunged into darkness. This Gap shirt was made in El Salvador. See the price tag, 20 US dollars. In fact, 40 workers in El Salvador in one day produce 1,500 of these shirts. $20 times 1,500 shirts is $30,000. The workers in El Salvador earning 56 cents an hour, they make, the, the, all the 40 workers collectively, they make $180 for the day. In other words, the women in El Salvador get paid 12 cents for each $20 Gap t-shirt. We have a very important question to ask. What has happened to the $19.88? Where has that disappeared to since the workers only keep 12, 12 cents out of the shirt? 
Under recent Republican administrations, the U.S. Agency for International Development has funneled well over a billion dollars of taxpayers' money into creating the free trade zones. In these protected areas, corporations import materials duty-free and export the finished garments to the U.S. at special reduced tariffs. They pay no corporate taxes, no income taxes, little or no social security or health benefits, and they treat their workers like slaves. There are no inspections, no regulations, and when workers try to organize, they are fired. Under such a system, of course you're going to lose jobs in the United States. Oshkosh has closed three plants, hundreds of workers have been put out of work. Since 1980, the United States has lost over 500,000 apparel jobs. We're losing about 28,000 apparel jobs a year. They're not helping the economic situation over there. They're giving slave wages, and they're bringing that garment back and selling it for a high price to Americans. What are the American people going to buy these products with? Because we're not going to have jobs. We're going to be unemployed. Equally is important. If you pay someone 38 cents an hour, that person's never going to purchase a product made in the United States. This can of spam would be about a day and a half worth of work for a Michaela Dora worker. Campbell's soup, this would be another day and a half's worth of work. In other words, the workers in Honduras are not earning enough to purchase even these simple U.S. products. So you lose at both ends. You lose jobs at one end, you have falling wages at one end, our end. At the other end, you can't trade. There's no one to trade with. You can't trade with someone making 38 cents an hour. Leslie makes 38 cents an hour. Her few hours outside the factory are spent helping her mother. Leslie is 15 years old and has worked in the factory since she was 13. For bus fare and lunch money, the girls are not allowed to bring their own food into the factory, consume much of her tiny paycheck leaving just enough to keep the family from starvation. Leslie works at Orion Apparel, a factory owned and managed by South Koreans, making goods for the U.S. market. The, the system has functioned perfectly for the companies up to this point because it's all been done behind closed doors. It's all been hidden. Every worker is searched on their way in to make sure they have no food or candy that might damage the clothing. They line up for attendance and then their day begins. She does the buttonholes, 100 shirts, or 1,100 shirts, 1,100 shirts. 11,000 shirts, 1,100 shirts. It's a Gentile shirts. In Central America and the Caribbean, in El Salvador, Honduras, the preferred workforce in the Maquiladoras are young women. 95% of the people working in the Maquiladoras are young women. And they target the young women because they're most docile. They know their rights the least. Uh, they're the least able to defend themselves. 20 años. Kawato? 15. 15. These are very good, this is very good material for the companies. And in fact, the companies have told us that they prefer the young women 
because at 16 years of age, they're at their peak of eye-hand coordination. I mean, they actually, they actually tell you that. Do you have a chance? To, do you have a chance to go to school? No. 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 How old is she? No, I'm 15 years old. Uh -huh. And how, how many years has she gone to school? Until sixth grade. And do many people have family work, or is she one of the only people working? Just me. You support. How many people do you support? Eight people. Eight people. And how do you do with that salary? Is it enough? Do they treat the workers well here? <laughs> Not so well. Mm -hmm. Do they ever yell at the workers? Or they scream, they scream. Do they ever hit anyone? Yeah. Does she think that she's going to get ahead at, at this job? I mean, will she get a better job working here? They only let one, they only allow one to work here. Uh, she wishes she could go to school. Anybody, anyway, mm -hmm. this is a private company. Yes. Without permission, how can you come in? Uh -huh. huh. Well, the door was wide open and... Uh, the door is wide open, you told the employees, not for you. It's very common offshore in the Maquiladores for forced overtime. It's very common to have 12-hour shifts, to work from 7 o'clock until 7 p.m. In fact, when lodge orders come in for the companies, it's not uncommon to keep the workers there all night. I take a rest when I come home tired for about 20 minutes. Sometimes I work a lot and I only take 20 minutes for lunch and I have to go back to work to finish my production goal because otherwise they'll make me stay to finish it. When the rush orders come in, say an order, a big order comes in from GAF that has to be filled, they have the kids working from 7 o'clock in the morning until 5 o'clock at night. They kicked out of the factory for two hours, they come back at 7 p.m. and they work until 3 a.m. in the morning. They're at the work 18, 19 hours to get these rush orders in. We've seen, we've stood out in front of factories, we've seen kids come out six o'clock in the morning after having entered the, entered the day before. We've seen children enter at 7.30 in the morning on Saturday and come out of work at 6 a.m. the next day on Sunday, a 23-hour shift. It's painful for me. As I told her, I wouldn't want her to work because she tells me that they yell at her, blame her. She goes to work and tells me that she'll be back at 7, but it's 8 or 9 when I get a little note from her telling me she's been forced to stay. I worry about her. It's dark on the road. But I calm down because I know she'll stay there until early in the morning. Sometimes it's 4.30 in the morning, and I have just got up, and then she comes. I tell her, child, I've been thinking about you. She says, Mom, don't worry. What am I going to do? I have to work. If she misses one day, they take out a lot of money. She doesn't get the whole pay. That's why she stays. You don't go to school now, do you? Do you want to go? What do you want to study? I need one more year to finish elementary school. 
You know, you study here for six years and then you go to high school. I think if I can study for three more years after elementary school, it will be enough. What the companies are doing, companies like The Gap, they're not letting the workers out. They're not letting the workers out to go to school at night. They're telling the workers, they're telling the, these young women, it's school or it's work. You decide. If you're going to go to school tonight, don't bother coming back tomorrow because you're fired. Octavio does not go to school. He is a factory worker. What grade have you completed? Fifth grade. What happened that you didn't go on to the sixth grade? I work to help my mom. In the factories, don't they tell you you can go to school at night? No, because I have to leave so late. You have to stay till you finish the quota. Do you always finish? Once in a while. And if you don't finish the quota? I stay. Until when? Me? Till six, seven, or ten. From 7 in the morning until 10 at night? Yes. Across the street from this factory are three girls who are doing their homework. They did not complete their quota and must spend their Saturday evenings sewing. Uprooted from the countryside, their families are squatters who live near the factory. Fourteen people live in this shack with no electricity or running water. The wages that these girls receive are so low that they cannot afford even the minimum requirements to satisfy their nutritional needs. So we begin to see these girls with pale skin, extremely thin, with clouded eyes. It is psychological in that it is destroying their love for life. It is immoral in the sense that they begin to believe that life is a long road of injustices. The feeling that no matter what they do, they will always be on this road of injustice destroys them morally. Do you think your friends want to work in the factory? No, not in the fabric because first of all the Koreans scream at you. Also, when they yell at you, they also hit. Like when there was a boy packing and the Korean just hit him in the face like this. They don't let me go to the bathroom. They don't let me go to get water. We could be choking of thirst and they don't let us go drink water until they want to let just one go to drink water. One goes and then the other goes. Two or three can't go drink because it's not permitted. For that, you get punished in the office. They give you birth control pills. They say it's for malaria, but it's a lie. They force you to take them and don't let you leave until you take them. Where do they make you take them? In the office by the gate. On the table, they line them up and you have to take them. In front of the supervisors? Yes, in front of the Koreans and the supervisors. This is just the end of a, of a very filthy process. An examination of where the maquilas dumped their garbage was revealing. Leslie, what happened about these pastillas? 
O sea, estas pastillas siempre las utilizan los empresarios. These are pills that the companies use. They say that many women might become pregnant, and since the company doesn't want to pay maternity, they give them a pack of these each 15 days or every month so that they don't become pregnant. And if they do become pregnant, they give them a shot to abort the baby. They kill the baby inside. Barbara, with these, the, it, it, these are the sort of uh, needles don't touch anything. That that uh, Leslie was talking about. Leslie, yeah. Leslie. Hacen las inyecciones así como siringes así. Sí, casi. Cuidado, que no se toca. Así como esto. The Koreans don't give the shots. A Honduran supervisor says, why didn't you take these pills? If the woman says she lost them, then they make her buy an expensive injection to abort the baby. In fact, the maquila is wringing Honduran youth dry. Within 10 years, we are going to have 25 to 30-year-old women, tired of life, sick. This will produce serious social problems for our country. We are going to have people without imagination, people who believe in nothing and who will not be able to function in the development that we want for our country. By treating our young people, our young girls as they are being treated, they are destroying our future, no more and no less.